Welcome back to Just Talking. We got a great show for you today, and we have uh, Joaquin Gray the Third here, actually, uh, with the. He's an excellent actor, director, writer. Joaquin, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course. My pleasure, my pleasure. Well, let's hear it. How did you get started in the movie business? Because you started um, at an early age. I guess it started with my father. Uh, as you know, uh, my dad was a nightclub entertainer, actor, singer mostly, and um, started with a movie called It Happened One Night, 1934. Oh. Clark Gable, Claudette Colbert. My dad has a scene on the bus and where he sings the song. That's where his acting career started. And um, he was also in a Disney film. He voiced uh, the character Panchito in a mm. Three Caballeros. This is in wow. 1947. So when I was born, now he was 57 when I was born. Yeah. Wow. So that's another long story. Okay. My mother was 21 and yeah, you know, I was his uh, fifth child. And um, growing up, at a very small age, I'd watch The Three Caballeros. I'd watch him. Uh, he was on Sanford and Son, Mannix, uh, all those 70 shows. And I wanted to be just like my father. I aspired to be like him. And um, I started acting in 73. And I joined SAG in 75. So I've been acting in the Screen Actors Guild for, I guess, 47 years now. So was it starting off like in commercials and things? Is that yeah, how you sure? Well, my first job was a commercial for Del Monte. I think the company's still around, Del Monte, yeah. Um, but uh, from then, it was, you know, I've done over almost 200 commercials and series in the 70s and movies for television and miniseries, all that kind of stuff. So that had probably helped with your dad being in the business that kind of knew how to go about doing, you know, auditioning does, and things like that. It does uh, make it easier. But, you know, all he really did was get me in an interview with an with a agent. And my first agent was Dorothy DeOtis. Uh, that company's still around. It's called DDO. Um, but I met her, and, like, literally that day, she signed me. And the next day, I auditioned for that commercial and booked it. Is that a good idea to have an agent? Uh, oh, in always. Mm -hmm. always yeah. You have to have an agent. There's no way around that. Uh, but one thing for sure that... You never pay anybody for anything. There should never be, give me money and I'll get you this. No. You get work and then you pay your agent or your manager or your publicist. But it's never the other way around. Yeah. And that's a very big, important point. Paco! Paco! That's it! Paco, are you all right? Aren't you and me, we okay. You ought to see those other guys. Well, the movie I, I and everyone else loved is Herbie Goes Bananas. My oh, God, is oh. that a, just a fun, fun movie? Well, let's hear all about that. How did you get involved in that? Because you were the leading yeah. star. Well, I started in, 70, in 73. So by, by 79, 78, I already, you know, had been on a thousand auditions. So it was just really another job audition. Um, it was interest, fun that it was going to be at Disney, even though... In 75, I auditioned and kind of booked uh, the Musketeer, the Musketeers. Remember the Mickey Mouse Club? Oh, sure, yeah. And that, and that one, Linda Wenchel was in that one. So if you remember that, that was that group. Okay. Uh, I couldn't tap dance at the time, so I didn't get to be in the show. Uh, but in 78, when I auditioned for Herbie, you know, there was a lot of kids, a lot of boys, and, you know, it gets narrowed down and narrowed down and narrowed down. And at the end, it was just two of us. And we did screen tests. The funny thing about that is the guy, his name is David uh, Yanis. He and I had been working together for seven years on a show called Via Legre, which was a children's bilingual show. Kind of like Sesame Street, but in English and Spanish. Oh. So it's funny that out of all those kids, all those boys, he and I were the last two. I just call you Ocho, okay? <laughs> Well, how was it being on a set like that? One, that Herbie's sort of a classic in the in their Disney genre, and then two, uh, you were ended up being the main star, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, honestly, really, for sure, I felt a little pressure. You know, you're you're ten years old, and I remember that first scene that we shot, uh, which, if you watch the movie, is where I'm running across the street uh, after I've stolen the wallet from uh, Richard Jekyll. I was a little, you know, at first pressure and you kind of feel like, oh my gosh, this whole thing is on my shoulders. But, you know, 
after that, right after that, I was right into it. So it was exciting to be on set with such big stars. You know, I mean, Harvey Corman, of course, each and John Vernon from Animal House. Remember mm. that movie? Rick, uh, Alex Rocco. I mean, The Godfather. I mean, oh, that's yeah. right. That's oh, right. Yeah, they had a pretty good cast. I thought. I mean, did Harvey Cor was Harvey Corman cracking people up off camera as he was? <laughs> I mean, yeah, he actually was um, very colorful. My favorite out of all of them. We stayed friends after. Uh, he actually took me to Knott's Berry Farm after with uh, his family. Really? Uh, yeah, and we stayed. We we stayed in contact, not too much, but you know, uh, by till the end of his life, I was I was talking to him. Well, unfortunately, uh, Cloris Leachman passed away uh, recently. Uh, what's your memories of Cloris? Um, you know, amazing actress. I mean, that's just the bottom line with her. Um, but an amazing uh, professional, you know. Go for no show! Well, I got to ask you, whenever you watch it, do you ever count how many times you say Ocho in the movie? <laughs> I haven't, you know what? I haven't done that. It sounds like, it sounds like a drinking game, but um, right? Looking good, Ocho. I mean, it's a cute thing. I, what they did, it was cute, and then towards the end, if you, I don't want to give it away, but just yeah. yeah. Even when I read the script, I was like, huh? <laughs> okay, Ocho, you got it now. Get him to and there was a lot of stunts in the in the movie oh, yeah. too, as well. I mean, was that another factor that was kind of amazing when you were doing the movie? Um. A little point about that is that, you know, 1980, unfortunately, on the Twilight Zone, if you remember, uh, there was a horrible accident where the helicopter turned over and killed Big Morrow. And That's right. Two, two stout, uh, child actors. Everything changed after that, I think. Because before that, because I worked all through the 70s, and I was put in, you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not complaining, but I was put in precarious positions as a child. Dangerous thing. And uh, Herbie was no different. I mean, when you watch me in that, like when I'm standing through the sunroof and we're going 40, 50 miles an hour, I'm not strapped in, I'm not, nothing. I'm just standing on the seat. And if you think about it, if we were to crash or roll over, I mean. Yeah, you know. exactly. So these are all real stunts too. That's before CGI, before Eisner, right? Pre-Eisner, post-Eisner. Uh, those are all mechanical uh, stunts. So like the doors, you know, somebody's in the back pulling a cable, uh, eyes turn, those are real mechanical, you know, things that are not CGI. So it's it's a different kind of movie. It's, it's you know, very pure and it's, and it's, kids today I think might watch it and go, oh, look, I can, I know how they did that, but you gotta suspend, you know, disbelief. Was there a, ever a premiere for the Herbie movie oh, yeah. at all? Oh, there was. Oh, my gosh. There was a premiere, actually, on the Disney lot. Oh, wow. So, so uh, you know, there was a theater there, or they, a beautiful theater. I, I, I don't know what the name of it. You know, it's on, on the lot. Gorgeous, huge theater, red carpet, lights, limousine brought us in. And then after, they had, like, on the back lot, which is kind of like a Western-themed area, they had uh, the party, you know, with the food, and, and Herbie was there, and, uh, you know, um, big, big, beautiful premiere. Yeah, it was fun. I took my, my cousins with me, too. I hope we win this one. Don't you worry, Aunt Louise. This is the car that's going to win the Grand Premio of Brazil. So at the end of the movie, I, again, if, or with the other ones, it felt like there was going to be a sequel after this mm -hmm. one. Was there There's talk about it? Did they approach you? Did you sign a deal where it, if this no, does what or how? I was supposed to be in the series. If you remember the series right after the movie. Oh, that's right. So that yeah. made a, they made a TV series of Herbie. Right. And okay. I was supposed to be in that. And, you know, it, the, the, it fell through. But I do know that I was supposed to be in a race in Rio in the next movie. I think it was called Road race to Rio or something like that. But I don't think it made as much as they thought. And you know, you know how that goes. And plus, like I said, that was pre Eisner. As soon as Eisner took over, everything changed. So I'm sure he didn't feel like doing any more Herbie movies. You know? So let's hear about it then after Herbie. Then what did you, did you continue acting? And acting um, I, I'm acting to this day, so I really never stopped. Oh. But as my childhood acting, um, 
I did, a, you know, I was in a couple of series and uh, commercials. Um, I worked, my mo- unfortunately, uh, the sad truth is my mother died when I was 13. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, so my mother um, was kind of my manager, my driving force. You know, my father was too, but my dad was more, you know, he was retired, older, let my mother take care of all that. So when she passed away, unfortunately, a lot of that left with her. Um, so I really didn't get started back up again until I was about 22. So I acted until I was like 18 and then took a little break and then started again. What changes have you seen along the way uh, in the movie business uh, since you started at an early age up until now? Gosh, well, you know, my daddy's Tommy stories, but at least from the 70s, um, a lot has changed. Well, for me, you know, in those days, uh, it was only like four or five, six, seven little Latino boys, you know, going to auditions. So it was we all, one of us was going to get it, you know, there's like 10 of us and, you know, so I think it's today, the market's oversaturated. I think people, there's a lot of people coming that shouldn't be, you know, so some of them shouldn't be acting maybe. So the market is oversaturated in the, in the respect that now there's just so many people auditioning that it just dilutes everything. You know, I think that's part of it. Um, that didn't happen in those days. And plus now we're connected through the internet, through the world so you know there's more competition i think in hollywood um you know unfortunately some things haven't changed you know we saw at the golden globes recently i don't think any latinos were even nominated so the farther we the, the, you know the more we go forward the, you know we go back so that's something we need to change you know more latino content maybe uh, now when i say latino i don't mean just mexican i mean you know honduran Chilean, Spanish, you know, all, yeah. all that, all that culture and all that um, talent that needs to be recognized, you know, not just white and not just black, which I, I mean, there's some, trust me, I love some of the actors that are nominated this year, but, you know, we need to open up the market for everybody, you know. So where do you think that starts with the writing, the project, and then what, or um, where, where, where along the ways do you think? I think it starts it kind at of the top. Off? I think it starts at the top. I think whoever's in charge of the money really, which is what we're talking about, has to green light more projects that are, that are Latino driven, Latino based. A good example is uh, my daughter, Carmina Gray, uh, is on a show called Diary of a Future President. Oh. And that's written by a Latina, produced by a Latina, about a Latina. So uh, there's a step in the right direction on Disney Plus. Actually, we're waiting for uh, the second season to drop. Do you prefer film over TV or what's the, is there a difference between the two or? No, there isn't, but I actually prefer performing in front of a live audience. Yeah. I do a lot of improv, um, a lot of stand up, and um, I prefer that, you know, interaction with the audience, you know, that instant gratification or, or that instant, wait a minute, it's not going the right way. Let's go this way, you know? That you don't get on film or, 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 you know, on television. Let's talk about the projects that you, that we can see you on recently. Are, are you in any series or, or movies that we can look at? Right now, but right. I just did the, uh, the Goldbergs in November. It was a small part, um, but uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm currently, uh, we're working on, like I said, uh, opening up this school. So we are um, trying to produce uh, a show to highlight the school. Uh, but I'm constantly auditioning right now. I mean, I've probably done seven or eight auditions since January. So just auditioning, auditioning, auditioning. You know? So that's what I'm doing now. If they do offer you a part uh, to bring back in a, in a Herbie movie, uh, let's say on Disney Plus, would you do it? Okay. <laughs> That's uh... I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> right. Yeah, of course. It'd be so much fun. It'd be amazing. I don't think it's gonna happen, but that would be awesome. You never know. Um, <laughs> it, do you have like a website people can see your work or anything uh, like that? I'm on YouTube. What? Okay, I'm YouTube. A YouTube channel. You know, Great. Working. Um, my Facebook, my Instagram. I'm always posting uh, videos. 
um, you know, in, on those platforms. And then, like I said, uh, hopefully soon, uh, when we get back to live theater, uh, we'll be performing, you know, two or three times a month. So that'll be somewhere where you can see me live. Well, Joaquin, we thank you so much for talking with us today. You're again, you're an excellent actor, director, writer, and thank you so much for talking with us today.